Hello, Carolina, and welcome to the show today. Hi, Stephanie. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited that we are going to talk about something so dear to my heart, um, human design. I am so excited. This is what I love the most, and it's something that I'm very passionate about. So thank you for having me. So you are truly an expert. Well, I, when it comes to human design, I feel like I'm always going to be digging deeper and deeper and deeper. But to answer your question, I've been studying human design for three and a half years now. Um, and I, I've done a, a few programs and studies and, and I continue to learn more and more. I'm still just as fascinated as I was on day one. Mm, that's, it's so, it's so fascinating and there's so much to learn, isn't it? There is, it, there's like layers upon layers upon layers that you can continue to, to dive into and learn from, um, not only for my own experiment, but also to, to help my clients. So yeah, I love that. How did you come to human design? How did that happen? So I, I, I always say human design on me because I can't remember how I first came across it. I just remember all of a sudden it had my all my attention. And so I started to learn as much as I could. And I started to listen to every podcast I could find about human design. And at the time, to, to give you a little bit more context, I had just moved from New York City to London with a three-month-old. So not only was I adjusting to becoming a mom, I was adjusting to becoming a mom in a, an environment that was completely new to me, where I had no support system whatsoever. I didn't even know my way about the healthcare system. So it was all very, I felt very ungrounded. I feel very, I felt very disconnected from my former self I feel like most people uh, when when women become moms um it, it can be a really hard transition so I was doing that transition on top of the other transition with no support whatsoever so that was really jarring for me and it was in that moment that I came across human design and it was really helpful because it allowed me to connect with the person. I, will, I, was, I was able to recognize myself in that person, the person I've always been, my true essence. And so that gave me a lot of license and a lot of um, permission to, to be that person I've always been and stop trying to be what everyone else was telling me I should be as a mom, as a wife, as a woman. So it was it was like a like a breakthrough moment for me. And after getting very interested in human design, I did my son chart and my husband's chart. And I just saw so many it was so accurate. There were so many characteristics of both of them. They were clear as day in their charts. And so I realized there was something something to it. So at the time I couldn't get books here in, in London. So I ordered them to, a, I sent them to a friend in the US. And I, I kind of took it one step at a time. I bought the book and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna read the book. And if I'm still as interested as I am right now, I'm going to study further. So I enrolled into my first, to my beginner reader training program. And so I did that for um, about a year. And then I did readings for my friends and family. And it was one of my friends who actually encouraged me to, to do this um, on a more, or I don't want to say... Uh, on a more serious basis like not so much as a hobby but to like take it seriously it's just like you have a gift like everything you've told me has helped me massively and you should help others in this way and so that's when I decided to create a business around it but then at the time I was pregnant with my second child so it's been a bit of a process timing um but I feel like also the time has helped me because it's 
help me understand myself on a deeper level and what I want out of my business and what I want out of life. So, I mean, there was a reason for everything. I'm just really, really happy and excited for, for the journey still ahead. You said something very that that resonates resonated a lot with me with something about human design that is so incredibly healing and validating all of a sudden you see on a chart like you have it on paper you can be who you are meant to be it's okay and there is even there it's not even just okay this is your way there is no way around it because if you don't live according to who you should be you will be forever be in misalignment looking for things not really feeling fulfilled feeling kind of lost being in conflict over and over again and you just don't know how to break through that so i i completely resonate with what you said it's so beautiful it it is that and further to that is also realizing that that person that chart that's on the paper that's who you were meant to be that that was your destiny to be that person so so it's 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 really freeing to be able to allow yourself to be that person because that's who you were always meant to be and that's your destiny and and when you are in alignment then everything else in life just kind of falls into place there's more ease there's more um the right people the right opportunities the right jobs or whatever it may be become easier to you there is not so much resistance and pushback in life so yeah i just mm. it's, it's been such a fascinating experience and and it's such a supportive tool um, I do it mostly in my business, like I just focus on human design, but I also uh, help coaches to use that in their own businesses as well. So it's so practical because it has so many ways to apply it in real life. Yeah. And I would even say that the most valuable business advice I received was based on my human design. When I was just new in business and I was driven by fear of, oh my God, how can I make this work? Is this going to work? Why did I quit my job? Like I have to family to sustain. What was I even thinking? This fear, we all have it for, you know, feeling like, what do I do if I fail? I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. The, the doubts we all have, it's very, very normal and very human. But once I started living by my strategy and my strategy is waiting for the invitation I got so much space like I'm a projector one three and my strategy is waiting for the invitation and that means it gives me permission to share with the world what I know about parenting about self-development but I don't have to push through it I don't have to push through the wall because there are people who are not ready to listen, who are not ready to receive. And that's okay. They will be at some point. But there are so many others who are ready to listen, just like what you you mentioned. You know, if you are listening now out there, dear listener, if anything resonated, what Carolina already mentioned, that is the invitation to seek out and to say, oh my God, I need to know more about that. And life and business for me, is so much easier and just so much more relaxing. I still, of course, have the doubts and the fears. That drives me. That drives me and strives me to be better. But I would say the best business advice I received is based on my human design. So this is such a powerful tool. Yeah, so as uh, for you as a projector, because your strategy is to wait for the invitation, the key was to recognize in yourself your own gifts, what you were good at. And for example, if you're running a business on social media, as soon as someone clicks follow this account, they're telling you it's an open invitation for you to share everything you want to share with them. So that's the process of the waiting for the invitation that projectors are called to follow. I find projectors, especially in business, they sometimes... Um, stumble they get like they get 
um, what's the word I'm looking for? They get confused by this whole waiting for the invitation because they are afraid that the invitation is never gonna come. But the reality is that, and they probably know this all their lives, like people have always been asking them for advice and insights and help because people can sense, like through their aura, people can sense they are good at finding that missing piece, at putting the, at connecting the dots, at like seeing people clearly for who they are. So they don't really need to do much other than just recognizing their own gifts and start sharing those. Yeah. And the, the more you do that, the more people will, will see those gifts in you. Yeah. And as you say, that works, you know, on social media on a large scale. I really feel that call when I have a successful reel and I have a lot of followers due to that reel mm -hmm. that, that start, yeah, you know, that resonates. Let me follow this person. Let me follow Stephanie. I get that energy, that immediate energy. I have something new to share. Like I get mm -hmm. almost like an inspiration out of mm -hmm. this invitation. Can can you please let me know what you are about? And and for projectors, that recognition piece is so important. It's so important for, for you to be valued and seen and not like, oh, she's good, but why is she good? Like she's good at this, this, and this, or she's amazing at doing A, B, and C. Because those are the, the specific games that you're here to share. Yeah. So yeah, that's it's it's interesting how even though a lot of our world right now works um on like technology, like social media and different platforms, a lot of this energy dynamics are still valid. Yes, yes, totally. Like, I don't think that this is not a real world. Mm -hmm. I feel it. Like, I connect with clients through Zoom. We we connect it. We create this energy now that yeah. is here. So it is real and people feel you. Mm -hmm. um, so also in business, it's quite important, especially when you're running your own coaching business and you're the only one showing up every day in the beginning, that you have the energy right, the energy you want to reach people with. And if that, if your posts are driven or created out of fear or desperation, if they're created out of a lot of doubts, or if you think I need to just write something that I think others want to hear instead of I'm writing from my own heart, that resonates so much more. So knowing the human design and especially there are few gates that, I mean, we talked already before this um, podcast. Mm -hmm. And you told me about the gate of ambition. 54. Ambition. Yes. 54. Yeah. Yeah. On your route. Yeah. And I've always felt that ambition that I feel has been suppressed because just society doesn't like so much very ambitious people. Or you need to know. No, no, no. Especially very um, ambitious women. Society has an issue with yes. very ambitious women. If you and that if, starts in, if in childhood. Talking about a man, they would they would actually be encouraged to be ambitious. Mm. Yeah, and that's it's true. From childhood, yeah, that's true. Especially when you when you think of a little ambitious girl that you know stands up and voices her opinion, it's like don't mm -hmm. do that. Be a good girl, you know. Yeah, don't be so bossy. Or yeah, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. But then you have a a boy, and it's like, oh, he's great. He will, you know, achieve he's going so to much. Go places. He's yeah. going to be president. Yes, yes. 100%. So I really feel with that gate that really opened my awareness about myself as well, but also mm -hmm. giving me permission. Yes, man, I want this, you know. I'm here to, to do this. I'm meant to be here. And I can yeah. still be kind. I can still be compassionate. I can still help and support. I don't need to be morally unethical. I don't have to be that that's that's the that's the key so in human design we are always talking about the polarity there's always a high expression and a low expression so that energy of gate 54 gate of ambition can be just as greedy and like that that i just want to accumulate wealth and material resources just for my own self-serving purposes and the same energy can be used towards I want to create something that will support me and my family and my loved ones and my community. And so that I can see what's beyond, so that I don't have to worry about putting food on the table and I can actually focus on 
being fulfilled or following my purpose or going beyond and like going into my spiritual journey, knowing that all my physical needs are fully met and my family is safe and my community is safe. So you see how the same energy can be can be taken both ways. Yeah. Um, so that's why even people like often like people often ask me about twins, the same chart. Um, and even then it may not be exactly the same chart, but it, it, it will be very similar. The reality is we still all have free will. And so we are always expressing the high and the low expressions of all of our different elements in our chart. So not to, people are never going to be the same, even if they have a very similar chart, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's also how you interpret what you experience and the impact it had on you as a child and throughout, you know, growing up and discovering yourself. Your conditioning. Yeah. Your conditioning yeah, exactly. and your environment. Yes. Mm. I know that I have a defined spleen center. Can you tell me more about that? So the defined spleen center is all about intuition. The spleen center itself, the themes are survival, instincts, intuition, thriving, um, your physical health. Um, so all of these things are things that you are are things that you are naturally very attuned with. So you have a great intuition, great instinct. You have a great great sense of what's good and healthy and safe for you. And also you will um, project out this energy that you are someone who's safe, that you are someone who is healthy, that you are someone who knows how to how to be healthy and guide others in that sense. Mm. And when we talk about all these mm. attributes, there was like, you know, attributes that elements, yeah. elements, yeah, um, in a business. So we all know those of you who are listening on who run their own business, um, you need to have a business strategy. Then you have coaches who tell you how to do things. If something doesn't feel right, something just doesn't feel right for me and I feel maybe cold DMing is not for me, that would be the intuition that I feel like, even though someone says and clearly advises, you know, you have to do that because you will have such a good turnover with that, but mm -hmm. just doesn't feel right for me. That would be the intuition okay. that I can trust. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And intuition is often, um, in your case, it will be something that's kind of like, um, very in the moment it may be like a quiet voice or an inner knowing and then there is just no justification there is no you just know you just know this is what's right for you you just know this is what's correct for you and there is no there was no logical thought process just you in the moment they gave you a, a choice do you want a or b and you just knew it was b mm -hmm. Um, that's kind of how your clean intuition authority works. Yeah, interesting. I remember having that with relationships, with friends. I immediately always knew without really being able to explain, I like being your friend. I would like to be your friend. And if I feel that, I would just do everything unconditionally. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if I just don't feel it, it's yeah. very hard for me to put in the work because it will just exhaust me and I cannot find the why yeah. back. Why am I doing this? Well, yeah. Okay. And and going back to your um, comment about business, when it comes to business, if you if you pay close attention, those who are very successful in business are people who are extremely aligned with their authentic self. And their businesses are in essence an extension mm -hmm. of of their own human design so when i do a chart for a client who's running a business i can see okay this this is this should be your branding your vision how you communicate with your clients your self strategy like everything is in their chart because it's always just an extension of who you truly are and the more in alignment you, you are with with that person the easier the business will flow for you and that's why when 
business coach A, B, or C tells you something, and you feel that resistance, that pushback, like it doesn't work, like there's no action, that's why. It's because that strategy is correct for them and they're designed, but it may not be correct for you. And and that's the, the, the thing that I love the most about human design is that we are all unique. And or value added is in our uniqueness. If we were all the same, there would be nothing new. There would be nothing interesting. There would be nothing to sell because we're all the same. So your value added is always in your uniqueness. And so yeah. the more you embrace it, the easier things will come for you. Yeah, I, I love that aspect, especially because in the beginning, it can be so hard to know how to, or to, to figure out how to do things in business. And you're looking at those that are already successful and you think, oh, I just need to do what she does. I need to write the post how she does. And then it will work for me. And then you are completely lost because it just doesn't. The niche doesn't, doesn't yeah. it the, the messaging doesn't work. I really love how you see human design and I share this as really your unique authenticity on how what you can bring to to the world and to the person that you're working with. Yeah. That's Beautiful. your that's your that's your secret sauce. Yes. So why change it? Yes. <laughs> That's so I magic. also, yeah, I also know that I have a defined root. What does yeah. that mean? So defined root, uh, the root is the energy center of adrenaline, stress, um, is the pressure to get things done. So if you have a defined root, you're someone who's able to cope with stress better than most. So you're the type of person, the person who likes to like send you see that in the middle and there's like a crazy hurricane chaos all around you and you're like sitting there with a smile on your face because you know you've got it whereas most people would be like losing their mind so you have this capacity to to cope with stress and adrenaline better than most you may right now like extreme sports or, or something that's a little out there just like get that rush of adrenaline um you're also someone uh, the, the root works in pulses so when you are in alignment with your defined root you may find that you have natural patterns even during the day where you will feel more um inclined to work and then some other times during the day where you feel like you need to take a break because that would work in pulses so like mm -hmm. it's it's a matter of finding your own um your own rhythm in that sense yeah i i can hear myself like i can feel you know i really love all the fast sports mm -hmm. i love that i love maybe the crazy yeah. things uh -huh. and i also which is probably how did you call it like a shadow of that the not self yeah the or the low expression the low expression I am very, because I can handle the pressure and I'm hardworking and I do actually enjoy it. I found myself in the hamster wheel in that masculine energy for the past 25 years. And, but is that, that has more to do with your undefined sacral. No, okay. So, so the root is the pressure to do and then the sacral is the, is, is the life force energy, but you don't have when you don't have it defined, that means you don't have consistent access to that type of energy. So 70% of the world is has to define state role. And so it is safe to assume that the world is essentially designed for people who have defined state role. So that's why we have jobs that are like nine to five and that's the norm. But for anyone without a defined state role, this may be very unhealthy because as we just covered for you, for example, you may have to, uh, certain patterns during the day that may not fit that nine to five model. Um, and so a lot of people struggle and, and push themselves too hard because even though they don't have the energetic capacity to, to do the consistent nine to five, five days or six days a, a week or whatever it is, they feel pressure to do so by society. Mm -hmm. And that's why we see so many people getting burned out so early in the game, like early 30s, 40s, because they are just not designed to keep up with those with a defined cycle. Yeah. So for those who don't have a defined cycle, it is 
see that they listen to their to their own energy pattern mm -hmm. and and realize that those may ebb and flow and maybe and I know this this is like all oh, if we live if we all lived in a wonderful dream world, we would all have the, the job of our dreams. But if you're not there yet, try to find strategies where like you can slowly start getting to that place. Because if not, the alternative is getting sick and burning out. So Yeah, that resonates. I was just close to a burnout in my last nine to five job. Exactly because I didn't have that the time when I needed it to recharge and to rest. Yeah. And now in in my business, when I can just listen really to my body, I work a lot of evenings. Mm -hmm. But people, when I tell them that, they're like, oh, didn't you want to leave your nine to five to have more time? And now you're working evenings, like after your kids are down. Like that doesn't mm -hmm. sound right. But it's actually when I am so relaxed and I work best. Mm -hmm. I just catch up on emails. I, um, I'm very creative at that time, but during the day, I need my hourly my my walk for an hour every day mm -hmm. after lunch, mm -hmm. and I never had the chance to have that you know chance to get air in my <laughs> brain. Yeah, yeah. So it's not really that I think, oh, poor Stephanie, you got to work in the evenings because you know you decided to start your own business it's actually very very helpful this is what feels aligned like it yeah. sounds like that's when your root is actually telling you okay this is work time yeah even though it doesn't subscribe to whatever ideal of like a work-life balance um we all have it's just kind of what, what works for you right yes so this uh you're saying that the undefined centers I have a lot of them because I only have two defined centers. Yeah. But how can I become aware of, because I hear that there is chance for conditioning in the undefined mm -hmm. centers. How can, yeah. how can I use this for my advantage or that I'm well in my business? Oh, okay. So there's two parts to this answer. The first one is we all have conditioning. There is, nothing we can do about it just by virtue of being in the same room with someone else we are conditioned by their aura and we're conditioning them it's a two-way space the key is to be very aware of what's yours and what isn't so for example for projectors or someone with a lot of openness with seven centers it's a lot of centers to have open or undefined it is key to have time alone so that you can clear those other energy centers that are open and essentially receiving the energy of everyone else. So you need that time off to actually be able to digest and pass that energy and get it out of your system in a way. Now, when it comes to business, those undefined energy centers are actually your cell centers because your energy centers are the lessons you came to this world to learn. And so those are the things that you've been learning about all your life and now you're ready to share with others to help them in their own journey. That's interesting. Uh -huh. I have not heard this before. So each energy center has its own theme and as a result, it's, it's a different lesson that you're here to learn and a different lesson that you're here to share. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, I don't know, imagine what, what, what felt is a transformation, right? So imagine, um, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to be like a supermodel selling a book of, on how to be thin. And you're like, well, what's the point? You were born thin. Like, you don't know what everyone else has been through. But if you're someone who actually had a transformation, who had like a, I don't know, a successful, healthy, wealth loss story, and you're willing to share that, then people are going to be interested. They're going to be like, yeah, I, I relate. I've been there and you can take me from there to where you are now. I want to learn from you. Hmm. You see the difference? Yes. 
or I don't know, a millionaire selling a book on like how to be a millionaire. Well, that's easy because you've got it already. Like you were born with money. So like, what do you know about it? <laughs> but if it's someone that is like, okay, I came from nothing. Mm. And this is how I built my kingdom, my, mm. my, my, all my wealth. Then people are going to want to listen. Yeah. See? Yeah. The, interesting. The, the, the cell is in the transformation and the transformation is always in the lessons you are learning this is so powerful i had a brand this a brand designer like when i started out my business i wanted to have a brand that represents me and she's a very intuitive person and she said to me she asked me what is your essence what are you here for and that was such a deep question. My head just started like I felt I, I don't I don't know. I have to think about this. And she said, let me give you, let me give you what I think. Let me tell you what I think you're here to do. And she mm -hmm. said, You're here to tell your truth. Mm -hmm. And it couldn't be more true. And now that you're saying, you know, that undefined centers is what I'm here to learn and then to share. I have an undefined throat mm -hmm. and I really feel I had to find my voice. Mm -hmm. I had to find the ability to talk. And well, you can use your voice to talk for those who don't have a voice. Exactly. And exactly what you're saying, like, because I have a voice, I can now support those who don't have one. And this is... You know, I work with a lot of parents and when you're a parent, you are a parent, you find yourself like, you're not listening. Why are you not listening? And then you find yourself yelling. And this is exactly the opposite of what you're achieving, the opposite of what you want, a crying child. And then the child doesn't brush your teeth anyways. Mm -hmm. And what I find with a lot of parents, and I can relate so much because I've been through exactly that, is I don't find my voice, my authentic voice to tell you what I need from you. How can we make this work together? But to, to be able to share, like, this is what's going on with you, I need to understand them first. And this is what I do, like, from my core. It's interesting because as you are talking, I'm going back and forth with your chart. And so in human design, we have something that's called the incarnation cross. And it is something that is deeply related to your purpose in life. So everyone comes to this life with a purpose. And it's not like, oh, my purpose is to be, I don't know, a chef or whatever it may be. It's about putting your energy out there and then your purpose knowledge happens as a byproduct of being in alignment. But as you were sharing about like talking about needs, what do you need and how can I help you? And it being kind of like a two-week treat that's the theme of um one of the gates in your incarnation process oh is it yeah and and the theme of talking and like voicing um like your your own experiences but also in your incarnation process so it's always fascinating to me to see how like all these things kind of come up like so naturally from people Without them, without them even realizing it, mm -hmm. um, because yeah, that's actually the whole point. Like you are here to live in alignment with that purpose, and your mm -hmm. incarnation cross is not like your way to, to to see that through. Yeah, and that's I think when you talked before about the secret sauce, when I have clients on calls and they say, "I just don't understand my child. I just don't know what to do." And we go through a five-step coaching process I have. Mm -hmm. And I speak for their child. Mm -hmm. And then I speak for them and I give them the voice. Mm -hmm. They always say, this sounds like our house. This sounds like <laughs> our conflicts in our homes. How do you know that? Mm -hmm. I don't know where it comes from, but it comes just without thinking. Well, with that, with that yeah. I love that you said without thinking because there's this is all in the body. Um, without much openness 
in your chart, you receive and as a projector, naturally, you're receiving a lot of the other. So you're very attuned to the environment to the other. You can feel how they're feeling. You can almost like think what they're thinking. It's almost like you know them better than they know themselves. Like you can preempt their needs. Um so these are all gifts that you have. Um and obviously when when you put those gifts in use when working, this is actually obviously going to help you um, and the people around us because the whole point is that when we put or give to serve others, then we're rewarded for it. Mm -hmm. Now, like the whole idea. Uh, so that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, I want to know from your experience, since you do this so professionally and you know so much about it and work with women in business, do you think there is one energy type or one design that is works better in business than another? I love that you were asking, do you know if there is one? And I'm like, nope. I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't know where this question is going, but the answer is no. There is no one that is better at X, Y, or Z than mm -hmm. someone else. It's all a matter of finding alignment with your true self and then using your own gift to make you the best X, Y, and Z that you can be. I love that so everyone has actually huge opportunities yeah and and not only that but by nature you're going to be called to do things that, that you're good at mm -hmm. like I am I am not a, I'm Colombian I am not a great skier I, uh, and that's the last thing I would want to do professionally you know so you're naturally going to be inclined to do the things that you're good at that come easy to you and then make you happy so yeah of mm -hmm. course like whatever it is that you're called to you're being called to it for a reason um and chances are you you when you're working from a point of alignment in assignment you're going to be very good at it mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah there's no there's no like or like generators are better than manifestors or anything like that or like oh because I have a defined this or I have this line in my profile there's none of that mm. so when uh, as a as an advice bef before we say goodbye for today what would you recommend to someone that is very new to this and just doesn't know like what you said before you know a new mom I don't know what to do like what is this life actually all about? I lost my purpose or I think I lost my purpose. I don't know what I'm here for. I'm completely lost. I don't have pleasure in life anymore because I'm constantly tired and I'm my time is not mine anymore. Yeah. What would you recommend a woman to, to look at through human design? How to find that purpose? So... The easier and faster way to do that is to get a reading because you can spend 60 hours, you're already sleep deprived and you know, already don't have time trying to figure it all out by yourself. Or you can just get a session and get it all done and figure it out and that have your, your questions answered right on the spot in an hour. So and when, when you're a mom, I, I know firsthand. <laughs> Time, time is a very, very precious thing. Um, so, and I'm talking from experience. I think at first I, 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 I don't know. I don't want to say wasted my time because it was my journey, but at the same time, I wish I would have just done a reader, a reading sooner, because it would have been like sped up the process for me so much. And so, and like in my profile, I have a one three, so the three is about trial and error about learning what to do what not to do so listen <laughs> from my own experience <laughs> don't waste time so, because not only that but there's so much out there it can be so easy to get conflicting information to get confused and overwhelmed and and there is so much in human design it's hard to understand where to even start like what are the relevant elements of your chart because for someone a specific gate may be very relevant and for someone else it may not be relevant at all so so someone that can see your chart and actually guide you and give you 
practical advice, not only when it comes to like finding alignment, but also like in being a parent or if you have a business in running your business, whatever it might be, it's, it's, it's well worth your money. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I read some, some somewhere, at least for example, when it comes to books, every book is worth it if you, if you get just one good idea out of it. It's a matter of like balancing um, your own time, like how much is your time worth? Mm. Um, that's how I see it. Yeah, I love that. I think this is mm. such good advice <clears throat> because there is so much to learn and to read about it. You're, I felt I'm just lost. I don't even know how to interpret all of that. Like, what are the connections like between all of it? Not only that, but like for example, for when I saw my chart, I saw it, and I like just just the vocabulary and the lingo in it some of the words were very disempowering Mm -hmm. so I almost just wanted to like shut it down I'm like okay this sucks my human design sucks I don't want to know anything (laughs) I don't want anything to do with it next and it took a little bit of like I don't know like I say like he just found me I Mm -hmm. like a little bit of like fascination for me to actually want to dig deeper Mm -hmm. and to really start finding the beauty and the gift in the elements I thought were flawed. Yeah. Yeah. But if I had that from the beginning, that would have been so much easier and so much more empowering. It's such a mindset shift, isn't it? Like to go from these are my flaws and lack to mm-hmm. this is actually a gift and you can yeah. use it. Like for example, for you, like I, I also they're different, but you also have seven on the fine energy center. So when I saw my 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 chart, I was very deflated. I'm like, wait, so I don't have anything? How can I get the other seven? Like, ah, this like I have so much conditioning and so much stuff to do, and like, why can't I just have it all? Um. But then I realized that it is through that openness that I can receive the other. Mm-hmm. So for example, in my business, my openness is such a gift because I can feel the other person very mm-hmm. clearly. I can, I, can, I can see what they're thinking. I can feel what they're feeling. I can feel their fears so I can guide them yeah. from such a better place. And also when we're talking about the lessons, these are all the lessons I came to learn. So now I can guide others through those lessons. Yeah. So see how that it, it's a complete like flip yes. of the coin. Yes. Um, but I didn't know that at first. And so yeah. it took a while for me to like get to that level. Mm. As you said, it's a journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have a friend who has all her centers defined. And her okay. first reaction was like, okay, so nobody can actually help me? <laughs> like, like it's all set and it's all done? <laughs> well, if she's someone who's very, like, like fixed in her way. Yeah. She's, she's also someone who must be very consistent, for example. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's extremely yeah, yeah. successful because she's so consistent and so mm-hmm. clear and she doesn't deviate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, but she's right, like, she she is not so much that that no one can help her it's that there is no room for the other in her system right mm-hmm. in the openness is where we perceive the other but if she's fully defined it may be hard for her to let the other in yeah it took me quite a while to understand are you are we friends like <laughs> or are you just you know not interested because yeah. it's so difficult for me to read that from the energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's where the electromagnetic connections come, come in. Because you, even if you have like all your centers defined, there are 64 gates and only 26 uh, planetary definitions. So you're always going to have some hanging there, gates, calling people in, trying yeah. to connect. Um, so those are the gates that she's going to be trying to connect with mm. um 
So yeah, that's where I would look in her chart, see how, yeah. how she's connecting, what she's calling into her life. So if anyone, and I'm sure there are so many who are interested in learning more about that and working with you, how can they reach you? What do you do and whom are you available for, basically? So uh, you can find me on I am Carolina Wickstrom on Instagram. I am a human design guide and I help business owners create businesses that are just are in alignment with their own energy so they can actually thrive, so they can find ease and so they can actually attract their 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 soul clients and all the opportunities. That's what I do. But also because we were talking about connecting to motherhood, that was the first thing that got me into human design. So I have so much empathy for all the parents out there. I also offer parent and child readings and I do this um, I never do just a child reading because I feel like the, there is an important element in the, in the dynamic between the two. Your child chose you for a reason. And you as the parent have a role to fulfill in your child's life. They also have a role to fulfill in yours. And as we were talking, when it comes to energy, we're always conditioning impacting the other so just as much as you're conditioning your kid your kid may be conditioning you so these energy dynamics are essential to understand when it comes to to parenting your own child it's not about like okay what's the perfect world bubble for them but it's also how can we make this as a sustainable successful harmonious relationship between the two of you because you as a parent you also have your needs you also need your needs met so, so that's why I come from from that point. It, it's not just just the child. We always just focus on the child and forget the parent. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to bring the parent back into the picture, so they can also feel supported in this journey. I will put all your links and um, yeah, your social media handle in the show notes of okay. this episode, and just really to encourage parents out there I had a look at my son's two of my my two sons human design and since I know it things are so much easier it's still a tough job to parent another human being but knowing that there are reasons why they are reacting the way they do and just it gives you just the trust and the the confidence that this is what they're meant to be here you know they're meant to show me things through their energy, through their their stuff that comes up daily. And that might be exhausting, but knowing their human design is such a gift. So if you are interested in just understanding where do the clashes come from, it often just comes from not knowing and misunderstanding. So reach out to Carolina. You, I think you put it beautifully the other day. You said it was kind of like having a manual for your child. Yeah. And that's exactly what it is. <laughs> and because every child is different, you have to plan them differently, right? The different yes. animals. Yes. So yeah. And their human design that hangs now, the printout hangs in the kitchen. And when we have breakfast, we we talk about it. Like the three year old doesn't quite understand yet, but the five year old understands that. Oh, look, because I have all these open centers, and I'm a projector. I feel your energy, mommy. <laughs> the yeah, projector you know? and the projector is really projectors are really good with them. So your projector little boy is really going to like understand the system maybe from an earlier age than most kids would. And so as such, he's going to be able to use it yeah. in a more efficient way. Yeah. yeah. That's so good that you're already teaching them that. That's wonderful. Yeah. And it's just, I wish I would have known my human design when I was little. Things would maybe have not been very different because society just is, you know, reacting the way and responding to us the way it is. Mm -hmm. But at least I would have had the innate belief, I'm not wrong. This is what I'm here to do. And I will find my way. I meant to yeah. find my way. Yeah. yeah. Thank okay. you so much for your time, Thank Carolina. You for having it was me. a pleasure. We could talk on and on. <laughs> it's such an interesting <laughs> <Great>. topic. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Thanks.